Hello everybody. So my name is Dave Gilbert. I'm a practicing dairy vet based up in the West Midlands, uh, Shropshire, Staffordshire, Cheshire area. I work with a variety of dairy herds, both locally and nationally. We provide consultancy services to some dairies that are further afield. We also work with a variety of industry sector companies, providing them some technical input, input and expertise. Um, to help them with their businesses in the dairy sector. And I suppose in my spare time, I'm also uh, a senior lecturer in farm animal health at, the, at Harper Adams University. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the value of milk recording data. Um, so why do I think milk recording data is useful and valuable to dairy farmers and how it can help you drive your herd performance in what is an ever more challenging market environment where we push to be more and more efficient in what we do. So I'll sort of start with that last point I made there about why the dairy sector is so challenging and why we do need to push ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's just no getting away from the ongoing onslaught of need to steadily improve efficiency in what we do. This is some data, it's a couple of years old, but it's looking at um, the retail price index against dairy sector sort of commodities and pricing. So what you can see there is the blue line um, demonstrating the sort of ongoing average uh, inflation in many of our inputs, many of the things we'll bring in onto farm. And if we just focus on that black line for a minute, we can see the relative value of the fresh milk that we produce on farm. And I suppose uh, if we to summarize that for a second, uh, what we can see there is that over the last nearly 10 years, the value of fresh milk really hasn't changed at all. Uh, but over that time, a lot of the inputs we bring onto farm have increased in cost by roughly a quarter. So we've got to find a way of bridging that gap and maintaining our profitability and performance on farm. And I suppose whilst we all try to control costs within our business, um, really what it comes down to is productivity and output. And if we can have more of these jars on the right here, full to the brim with highly valuable, highly nutritious uh, white gold, and less of these jars on the left here, that are only sort of a quarter full, that's going to make the difference in terms of us uh, having that profitable, efficient business. So whether we hang that because we're just selling more milk and therefore there's more income coming in, or whether we're having to keep less cows to produce the same amount of milk, and therefore our business is more efficient. And I'm sure you'll all have heard this mantra before, but if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And I guess that's one of the key messages for me. If you don't constantly review and look at your performance, and to do that, you need the data, you really will never drive your business forward and achieve those goals and those efficiencies that you're trying to in, in dairy production. Animals, as we would in any other business, and our low performing animals. What we do with that, slightly different messages, but it may be we want to select our best animals to breed their genetics, perpetuate them within the herd. It may also be that we want to remove animals that are really not pulling their weight. So here you've got some data I pulled together a couple of years ago. Um, what you've got here is five fairly standard British dairy herds. So this is a box and whisker plot. These are always a bit painful. Um, so if you look at that sort of where the X is and where the line is within that box, that's the average, two slightly different um, definitions of average here. But what you can see there is these guys are all sort of nine to 10,000 litre herds on average. The box itself represents where the majority of the, the cow's production is. 
And then the, the ends of those two lines represents the outliers. So the highest producing cow and the lowest producing cow on a 305 day milk yield. And what you can see there is a huge amount of variation. Now, for an individual milking herd, we can probably plot, we spend a lot of time talking about sort of um, cost of production and break even milk price and things like that. We can probably plot a line if we reverse that calculation to rather than a number of pence per litre, a number of litres at a set milk price at which the cow breaks even. Um, so for an individual herd, you can argue about these numbers, but it might be about 8,000 litres. Now that cost is always a calculation of two things. There's the, the, the truly fixed costs and the truly variable costs, and then there's some semi-variable costs. So realistically, you're not going to sack uh, 0.1 of a labour unit just because uh, you've lost a few cows. But, but after that sort of profitability line, we can probably plot a truly, uh, if a cow is making less milk than this on a daily basis, this cow is costing us money to have on our farm. And you'll probably all find, if you look at your numbers hard, you've got cows like that on your farms that aren't pulling their weight. So just going through those milk recording records on a monthly basis, looking at the cows and thinking about where they're up to in their breeding cycle, what their current performance is, making those decisions about, do I want to breed replacements from this animal? Do I want to continue to breed this animal? Is it likely to still be producing enough milk in 200 days time that it, it remains profitable? Is it just a cost to my business now? It can really help us with that efficiency. Next sort of uh, thing we get out of our milk recording data, which many of us will look at, somatic cell count data. So we've all probably cast our eye over the records and look at who's got really good scores and who's not got such good scores. But this data can be really valuable when we're looking at putting together mastitis control plans, uh, managing herd level issues. Um, so whilst I, like all you guys, will look at individual cows' results and think about what we should do with those animals, really the value for me in that data is the patterns that it creates. So here we've got a classic sort of chart I might look at. We've got time across the bottom, so month by month. And we've got different types of cows within the herd. So cows that have recorded for the first time high this month are the blues. Cows that have recorded high at their first record are you know, the little band of greens. Cows that have had a repeat infection, little band of yellows. And then the reds at the bottom, the chronics. And looking at the patterns, we see over time, we see going on on a monthly basis, can really help us to identify where a problem is coming from. So as you can see on the far right here, we've had um, a period during the winter where new infections were really quite low during winter housing. And as we've gone out to grass, that blues really start to flare up. Heard at this stage was having a bit of a book somatic cell count problem. Now we could start chasing shadows, but very simply because this data exists, I can pinpoint that that issue is being created by new infections um, and that it's happened since we turned out. So it immediately focuses our attention on where the problems are likely to be coming from and where we should focus our interventions to correct those. Constituents. Perhaps all glance at fats and proteins, depends a little bit on the type of contract you're on in terms of the value of that data to you. But beyond the constituents from a sort of a bulk, some bulk tank perspective, a payment perspective, there's again, a lot of value we can get from that data. So one of the key things I'll look at is often protein yield in the first 60 days of lactation. Protein late yield, is quite a good demarcation, as bizarre as this sounds, of energy states in early lactation. So thinking about those, that negative energy balance and those ketosis problems we may come across, particularly in high yielding setups. 
So pretty much all cows, regardless of literage, should be capable of giving a minimum of 900 grams of protein per cow per day. Um, and what we've got here again is months across the bottom. So each of these bars is a month. And colour coded, we've got cows that are thumping out plenty, plenty of protein, doing more than a kilo. In the amber, we've got cows just in that borderline, 0.9 to 1 kilo of milk protein a day. And the reds, cows giving less than 900 grams of milk protein a day. It can be really useful data in terms of just very, very simply and easily assessing a herd's risk of ketosis at any moment in time. And because this is data that is just there, we don't have to go out and bleed cows, we don't have to go and do anything extra. I can look at this data with herds I work with and I can easily spot problems that may be brewing up in the transitional period and we can intervene at an early stage and try and correct them before we start to see problems with LDAs, uh, fertility issues, poor cow health in the first 60 days of, uh, of milk production of lactation. So again, really useful data that is just there if you milk record and, and both you and you, your advisors can make use of to enable you to better manage your herd, reduce some of those efficiencies which might creep in. Finally, perhaps topically, because most of us are now pressed contractually uh, to be doing something actively about the Yonis, and I, I'm a big advocate that Yonis is one of those insidious problems that just drains the life out of your herd over time. Um, health data. So I've chosen to pull up Yonis because it's probably the most topical and the one we think about the most. But depending on your milk contract, your desires, uh, your beliefs, there's a wide uh, number of sort of health uh, disease monitoring type uh, uh, packages we can include within our monthly milk recording to help us manage our herds. So again, here we've got uh, a graphic that you pull out from your milk recording data if you chose to use CIS. Um, we've got the cows that have been recorded and they're just colour coded into green low risk, um, uh, yellow and red high risk of those slight different definitions on the J1 to 5 uh, type of um, uh, definitions. And we can see over time how we're getting on at any one moment in time and we can drill down into who those cows are and, and what's going on and, and really just spot are we making good forward progress? Have we got this disease under control? Are we where we want to be? Or are problems getting away from us? Do we need to take more action? And again, this is just something that happens. If you uh, choose to milk record once those samples have been collected and the data has been inputted, this is all data that just comes back to you and enables you or your advisors, your team around you to sit down to process this data and to make those business management decisions which really yield the efficiency over time. So that was a little bit of a whistle-stop tour of milk recording data and why I think the process is, is valuable. Um, really, we see it from all walks of life, from business, from professional sport, um, from anywhere where performance is important. And if you want to manage performance, it requires data, it requires review, and it requires decision making. There's a really wide variety of useful outputs we can get from monthly milk recording data. Um, and it can enable us to, to make those decisions on different aspects of our cow management. So whether it's the decision making on cows from a productivity perspective, do we, uh, do we breed them to sex semen because they're a really good genetically, uh, genetically great animal? Do we continue to breed them because they, they're a viable ongoing concern or do we call them because they're just costing us money to keep on the farm? Milk quality, again, in terms of making sure that we're hitting those numbers for our milk processor, 
um, and getting the, the best return we can out of our milk contract. Um, using some of those milk constituents to assess the nutrition and, and whether the diet we're feeding our cows is enabling them to reach their potential. And then some of those health things, both from another health and from a general sort of infectious disease perspective, which can enable again to remove some of those uh, inefficiencies from the system and maximise our output for our inputs. And then finally, you know, there are some future opportunities. You know, the milk industry changes on a year by year basis. You'll all be familiar with uh, the fact that many of our milk processors and retailers are asking more and more things of us. Um, and it, once this data is there and it's recorded, um, we've got software that enables us to manage that data. If you're being asked for outputs by your milk buyer, uh, if you require new pieces of data to be submitted to your milk buyer, that data, that information is all there. It's at your fingertips. It can be used to help you manage your business, but it also takes a heck of a lot of the load and the paperwork out of meeting those contractual obligations. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was interesting. Thanks very much for your time.